So, at long last, after almost 10 years, we've come to the end of the final Guardians of the Galaxy film. Damn. I still remember when the first one came out and pretty much changed the game for Marvel, proving that they could pull out any type of obscure character, and as long as it had a good story and good directing, it didn't matter that they weren't a household name. They could become a household name off the back of their first film. And then yeah, the Guardians just became mega popular. They were raking in good box office earnings for each film and decent critical and audience responses, whilst also having the James Gunn style start to get replicated quite a bit in subsequent Marvel movies from other directors. The films themselves were visually diverse and exciting, and were able to sustain a pretty large ensemble cast, each given their own time to shine. Not only in that first film, but in the second volume and the spin-offs and even the big Avengers team-up films. And then only recently, that era has come to an end. As I said, with the release of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And early opinions are in, and after a very lackluster reception financially and critically for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Guardians 3 seems to be a return to form. So far, after only a few days, it's grossed $282 million off a budget of $250 million, and that's just as of writing this now. It's probably gotten more since. So it seems well and truly on the way to becoming a major box office success, which is good, considering Ant-Man was a box office bomb and also critically panned. But Guardians 3 has once again gone in the opposite direction there as well. It has an 81% critical score off 300 reviews and a 95% audience score off around 5,000 reviews. So it's pretty clear to see that the film is very popular and has done very well for itself. It's maintained that high quality the franchise has become known for, and sent the trilogy off on a high note, as well as permanently finishing off a number of storylines for key characters. The film itself largely forms around Rocket, and the important role that he's played in the lives of the Guardians throughout their time in the MCU. After being incapacitated early on in the film, his origin story is largely told through dream flashbacks, as he reflects on his life as a creation of the High Evolutionary, as well as his friendships with the three other... lab rats, I guess. Floor the Bunny, Lila the Otter, and Teefs the Warus. Meanwhile, the remainder of the Guardians race against the clock, trying to track down the secret to saving Rocket's life, whilst also dodging the forces sent out by the High Evolutionary, who aim to capture Rocket and dissect him so they can study his brain and figure out what made him so different from the rest. And yeah, that's a pretty bare-bones plot summary, but honestly, this is the type of film you should be watching yourself, so I don't want to just blast through the whole plot. Regardless though, it's got to be one of the MCU's best written films of all time and is certainly the best of this generation. Maybe only Black Panther 2 can compete. Seriously, the writing is off the charts here, especially in the way that they manage to interweave the comedy, of which there is a lot, you know, in typical James Gunn slash Marvel fashion, with the far more serious elements. Because really, this film is quite dark. You have genetically modified slaves, a lot of violent deaths, the massacre of Rocket's foster family, a number of really creepy scenes where Rocket has to interact with this violently abusive man, and at one point, an entire planet gets obliterated. A planet with what was likely billions of life forms on it. Life forms that we got to know and see as just normal people. So that too was pretty bleak and depressing. And you have not one, not two, but three major hero death fakeouts. Drax gets shot, Rocket goes into cardiac arrest and actually flatlines before having visions of the afterlife and coming back. And then Star-Lord almost dies from exposure in space in a parallel to Yondu's death. And so yeah, that really does set the film up to be quite dark and bleak. But then this is dampened somewhat by the comedy. And dampened in a way that doesn't detract from the seriousness of what's happening throughout the film, but just softening things. Keeping it from becoming too bleak and reaching that point of no return of being too dark for Marvel. But anyway, finding that all-important balance between drama and comedy was not the only major triumph on the writing side of things. What was most important was the writing of the individual characters. Each character and their role within the team was fleshed out, and you got to see different sides of them. They all had their own arc within the story, and each character had their own time to shine and develop and grow. They become far more deeply laid characters than they had been previously, and this was especially true for Rocket, and doubly impressive, because of our main characters, I'd argue he gets the least screen time overall. He's incapacitated early on, and whilst he does have a number of very important coma flashbacks, that really flesh out his past and how he became the way he is, the primary action still follows Peter and the crew. And so yeah, Rocket's whole tale. That's got to be one of the best pieces of writing that Marvel has ever done. Seriously, so deeply sad and unsettling and heart-wrenching. And it added so much depth to what was originally just the comic relief raccoon character. And I mean, ugh, that whole final flashback sequence where he thinks he's going to escape the High Evolutionary with all of his friends, only for them to be murdered one by one, 
right as you get that sparkle of hope. That moment where the film briefly lets you forget that none of these characters were even in the first film, so that means they clearly have to die. But yeah, the film made me forget that, until literally the second before Lila gets shot. Ah, oh, beautiful stuff. And it really does cap off Rocket's whole arc of originally only being out for Groot and himself, while slowly learning to let others in and to find a new family before being appointed as leader of the New Guardians. But he's not the only character that shines. Because on top of that, Peter gets a really cool and bittersweet arc, where he has to come to terms with the loss of Gamora, and that new Gamora, the one from the alternate timeline, is not the same person. She's different. She'll never have those memories. And so he can't get back what he lost by replacing her, and pretending like it never happened at all. Which in turn, culminates with Peter finally returning to Earth to find his granddad, and to start to move on from all the trauma in his past. All against the backdrop of trying to save the life of his best friend along the way. Another element of the film that worked really well was the High Evolutionary. Completely awful, completely evil, completely unsympathetic. In a lot of films these days, in an attempt to add depth to the villains, they often give them a sob story. Something for the audience to latch onto to help them understand why they do the things they do, and often try to make things all the more tragic. This film sets itself apart by not doing any of that. James Gunn doesn't bother trying to give us another angle to the character. From the get-go, he's a monstrous person a psychopath, an abuser, determined to perfect life and purge those that don't fit in with his perfect image. And it's really refreshing, as it gives the heroes so much awfulness to work with. And it gives a character like Rocket, who usually fits more into the rough hero slash anti-hero with an edge type of persona, a new chance. A chance to be a clear-cut baby-faced hero for once, which in turn gave him a massive chance to develop as a character. Just really great writing here for the villain. Some of the best writing Marvel's done for villains. I really loved his whole vibe with Rocket, young Rocket, especially when he had him in his lap. It was so creepy and clearly abusive. And whilst he was sort of kind to him in that moment, you could tell it wasn't sincere. And in that way, you were completely unsettled by this dude. Just really good stuff. And it goes to show that not every villain needs a sob story. Not everybody needs a lot of depth as a person because some people just suck and the High Evolutionary personifies that. On top of that, I very much enjoyed the way in which the narrative was able to balance the stories of all the various different characters. Because, look, it's pretty clear that some of the Guardians are more important overall than others. That's just how it is. In pretty much all ensembles, that's the way it goes. But that being said, nobody in this film, at least of the main crew, felt like they were background scenery. Yeah, there were some characters that were clearly more important, but nobody felt unimportant. They got their moments and their arcs, which were all interspersed throughout the film. And each of them does come to an emotional conclusion and ties up their arc neatly in a bow right at the end of the movie. And speaking of which, I also really enjoyed that they resisted the temptation of killing off one of the characters. As I think that this ending really does prove that you don't need to do that at the end of a franchise. You don't need to kill someone to have a sad ending. Because yeah, the happy ending is there. Hooray, nobody died. You know, it's all good. We saved the galaxy. But in the end, the heroes all go their separate ways. They're no longer the Guardians anymore. Not the original roster at least, which in a way is even more sad. Because if a character dies and the team breaks up, you're sad, but it's because they've been separated by this death. But you still understand why it's happened. And if they had a choice, they wouldn't have broken up. But here, everyone lived. But they still chose to disband, to go their separate ways and move on with their lives. And so it leaves you with this really powerful, bittersweet feeling, which in my opinion, is far more moving than just a character death, or at least a character death in the context of this film. So yeah, just great powerhouse writing for Marvel here. Some redemption after some lackluster movies, I think. And then of course, the effects were good, the costumes were good, the jokes were good, you know, the jokes. They really aren't all that different to what we're used to, but at the same time, they still feel kind of fresh even after 10 years. Peter dropped an F-bomb, which was a major surprise, but a welcome surprise too, I kind of enjoyed that. Got a shocked laugh from me, if nothing else. There was great action, and I really enjoyed the massive fight sequences, especially the first one against Adam Warlock. That really got the blood pumping. You start off the film with a bang, and yeah, never really goes down from there. And there's nothing really else to say other than see the film. It's an awesome film. And I think it goes a long way to show that the James Gunn DC era could very well be a new superhero golden age. Either way, Guardians are finished for the most part, very sad, but this was the perfect send-off. Top tier MCU film, loved it. And so I'll say this, these were just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. If you've seen the movie, what did you think of it? Did you like it, hate it? Did you think it was a good ending for the franchise? 
Maybe not. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.